Hi. Uh, I'm Alexandra Yorskiewicz, and um, I will tell you a story. It's not a business presentation, uh, so you can relax and drink up. Uh, it will be about naive and entrepreneur uh, and about failure. Um, I don't know um, if you know, but I didn't, that most of the companies um, fail. Uh, in the best possible scenario, they are bought by other companies, but in the, w in the worst scenario, they are just shut down. And statistics are really, really, really horrible not only for Poland. Uh, if you check uh, Europe or, or worldwide, it's basically the same. So for example, if you check the um, uh, Fortune 500 list from 973, uh, 15 years later, then you'll notice that um, about 40% of the companies, and I mean, it's Fortune 500, right? So it's the, like the list of the biggest, biggest companies in the world. It's, they don't exist. So um, even the companies that you know at the moment, like Jaguar, Subway, Polaroid, and Yahoo, they have huge problems. So when I was starting my own company, uh, when I was thinking about starting my own com company, that thought didn't cross my mind, right? So failure was not an option, but it was not like I'm afraid or something, but it wasn't just there in my mind. Uh, but let's start from the beginning. I'm the kid of 80s. Um, and I remember that I watched with my grandma, <laughs> uh, Dynasty, and Bold and Beautiful. And I watched a lot of um, MTV. Uh, and when I thought about myself, um, I thought that uh, it's normal that when I grow up, uh, I will have the pool, I will have nice uh, house, at least house, not an apartment, uh, and it will just somehow happen. Uh, and when I thought about my professional life, I thought that I will be working in a, some international company, right? Mm, I've uh, graduated from Japanese studies, so not marketing or management, uh, I had different thoughts about my career. Uh, I've been working uh, even as a flight attendant. So basically my thought was uh, just to do something interesting. Uh, but uh, at some point I came back to the idea of working in a corporate environment and that it will make me happy and it will make me work in a, uh, in a place that is glamorous, right? So I thought, well, what's the best place to be uh, glamorous, L'Oreal, right? Um, it took me seven months to get there. And uh, my first day uh, was exactly that I, wha what I imagined. Uh, it was a press conference, so huge PR event launching a new product. Uh, I think it was in Hilton Hotel. Mm, and celebrities, um, the best journalists, uh, I was wearing heels, of course, nails down, you know, women, <laughs> right? Uh, and I thought, okay, so that's how my life will look from now on, right? Um, but the second day wasn't that good. Actually, I've noticed that one uh, box of cream is not that heavy, right? <laughs> Uh, but when you have to send it to um, like 150 other journalists, uh, you have to run um, the back and forth with boxes full of creams and that weights a lot. Uh, so I've spent, uh, I've spent four years uh, in L'Oreal and that's classic. Uh, I worked in PR and then in marketing. Uh, I've learned a lot. <laughs> really a lot. I was managing one of the biggest uh, Polish ad advertising budgets because as I was working with uh, Vichy, so we know uh, the, the traditional marketing mix, uh, which is TV and press and, and uh, even internet and then the radio. Uh, and I got more and more tasks, more and more money, some promotion, and more and more absurd um, jobs to do and absurd um, uh, products, right? Uh, at one point, at what one point, um, well, 
there was a situation where uh, I had a press campaign and uh, to, to, to make a successful uh, press campaign in Poland, you have to have samples. And a truck filled with uh, cream samples uh, was stopped by a heavy snowfall in France. And it was re really, really late in, uh, uh, in the night, like 11 o'clock or, or even 12. And of course, everybody was expecting m me to do something, right? <laughs> uh, we start in a week and you have to get the samples. So I was so, so angry. Um, and uh, I had a feeling that th this is going nowhere. And to get free, I have to do something with myself. So uh, it was January, actually. So you know, all the New Year's resolutions and so on, so on, got me thinking. Maybe, maybe I can do something on my own, right? Uh, both of my parents had their own companies, uh, so I thought, okay, maybe that's the moment where I start thinking about it, and that's what I did. Um, my idea was that I will prepare three business plans. And to get them prepared, I had to search a lot uh, in the internet. So I um, got <laughs> to some websites that I didn't intend to. <laughs> well, um, hard porn will not get me there probably, although <laughs> when you see at the budgets of Pornhub and so on, the <laughs> probably <laughs> that would be better solution for me. Uh, and I found some products that were like a gold mine, I thought, how come nobody, but nobody is distributing them in Poland or even in Europe? I mean, please, <laughs> baby jumpsuit that is cleaning a uh, floor, that's brilliant, right? Um, so uh, three months, and I was very, very, very persistent. I don't know how the hell uh, I got my energy uh, where from, because I, I was working like 12, 12 hours a day. Uh, but I was really, really, really motivated. It prob it's uh, and probably you are having that feeling right now because you are creating your projects. Uh, so I did it, and um, it was I think late March that uh, I was ready, and uh, my friend uh, and my partner's friend uh, Pavo came by. Uh, they knew each other from university political studies. And I said, okay, hi, <laughs> very, very nice to see you. You know what? I've been doing a lot of research and I thought that maybe I can start a company. And he was like, whoa, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> so look how naive, right? <laughs> uh, we are both at the moment where we can, uh, or we want to do something. We feel that our creativity is not being used well in uh, our companies, nobody, nobody taps us at the back and says, oh, good job, good job, right? You are so creative, you're a good worker. So we thought we will make it for ourselves. Um, and uh, we thought that from the three business plans that uh, I've prepared, uh, the best solution, uh, uh, the, the best way to choose the business is to ask some other people. So uh, we uh, did like corridor tests. I don't know if you know what it means, but in marketing, usually when you have a campaign, you uh, run through the whole company and you ask random people, do you like it, right? Uh, the, the best uh, um, uh, testing gets uh, in uh, alcohol companies. Uh, so when they test like, for example, lemon vodka, you can <laughs> try 15 different uh, kinds. And uh, we chose Fun in Design, which was shoe designing platform. Uh, that project, uh, it, it wasn't an original idea, and we didn't uh, say that from the beginning, right? We're, we were quite honest. I saw the project in Japan, and uh, I thought it was a Japanese idea, but then uh, I learned that it was an Australian uh, startup. Uh, each and every woman that saw that project was like, oh my God, you have to do it. I will buy, sh buy shoes from you. Uh, families, friends, strangers, they all said that, that it's a perfect, perfect, perfect product because they often have problems with finding the right uh, design, the right, the right shoe for themselves. So we started. Uh, 
it uh, we didn't start as two people. Uh, basically, just like in a one month, I managed to, let's say, uh, <laughs> um, uh, the make four other people <laughs> to work with us. Um, uh, they were our friends and, and, and partners, and so we we got six people. Uh, the most, I think, that the hardest part in that time uh, was to find because we are, you know, nobody knew anything about shoes, right? Uh, I'm not into fashion, honestly. I'm more into gadgets. So Pavel, Pavel was the, the the person that was responsible for for the product. Uh, so the the biggest problem was uh, finding the the contractor that will make the shoes. Uh, imagine me calling through Poland through all the companies that I found in internet and explaining that I'm interested in ordering shoes, but I don't have the design yet. I want to do. I want to order uh, one pair, uh, but probably it will, you know, uh, it will grow. So uh, one order, one pair, and maybe two shoes different in that one pair. And I heard, uh, yeah, yeah, great. Uh, we can we can start working with you. The minimum order is 500 uh, pairs. And I said, no, 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 no. You don't understand. I want to order probably 500 pairs of shoes, but each will be different. And I said, uh, no. <laughs> and imagine like hundreds of companies. I think I called almost everyone. So that was hard. And in the meantime, I've, re uh, I've read an article about uh, press conference uh, of the company that did basically exactly the same in Poland, in Warsaw. So we were like, what the fuck? <laughs> How? We were, okay, we, were, we weren't so secret about it, but what are the odds, right? It was like kicking the head. I mean, imagine you are working so hard for months, night and day, searching for contractors, designing the shoes, making the website, searching for guys that will make application that will enable you to design the shoes, that it's not easy. And then other team gets everything done before you. Uh, well, uh, it appeared that they had a shoe um, uh, making company in their family. So for them, it was very, very easy to start. They didn't have very advanced application. It's Loft seven, uh, 37. Uh, but at least they have company that can make the shoes. So that was groundbreaking. Uh, we, f for two weeks, we thought about quitting the project, not doing it at all. But then we started thinking, OK, <clears throat> that's weird that uh, when you go to the mall, you have um, all the sport companies next to each other, then uh, food companies next to each other, and so on, so on, so on. So it seems that the more companies, somehow, uh, you have in a particular area, then uh, it doesn't get, uh, okay, it's very competitive, but you sell more and more because at least people know about your product. So how many people can uh, search in Google uh, for um, personalized or customized shoes? Not many. So having competition, we thought, may be good. They will educate more our cons uh, consum uh, consumers, and then we can, you know, compete uh, in terms of price or product or whatever, right? But the first most important task was to educate consumers that you can actually buy such a product, right? So then it took us another four months to find a company. Uh, funny thing, we didn't spoke uh, about it much in our, uh, with our friends. And a guy that uh, my partner knew uh, told us that, oh, well, <laughs> if you talk to me earlier, I would say that I am in the family that have a shoemaking uh, company. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. <laughs> Talk more to people, talk more to people. <laughs> Solutions are closer uh, than you think. Uh, so we started, we made an online, cat online catalog. Uh, our family started uh, ordering shoes. Ah, uh, time, okay, I'll try to be faster. Uh, and uh, then uh, I think it was one year uh, after the idea uh, even came up, uh, we got to Dzień Dobry TVN.
Uh, it was really hard work and Pavel is the uh, PR person that uh, did all that. And that day um, made us uh, think because we got like, um, th I think 1000 orders one day, 60,000 people were trying to get to our website. Of course, the servers were down several times. Uh, and that day showed us that uh, it's, it can be a hit, but we weren't that sure to quit our daily jobs. So all the way down, we were working in our corporations and making the startup. Uh, well, two, th uh, two months and um, uh, orders were getting slower and slow I mean, uh, lower and lower in quantities. So we thought, okay, there's a problem. We need to do something. And we thought that, well, maybe we need a mentor. Uh, of course, in our minds, uh, we thought we don't want to speak in with the regular person that has a, a startup or a company. We wanted to speak uh, to people that created internet in Poland. What's the best way? Haha, <laughs> go to a contest. So there was Agora Startup Fest, which is, I think, one of the biggest uh, Polish uh, uh, contests uh, contest in Poland. And uh, imagine, we with shoes, and then all other companies with um, SaaS and games, uh, I mean, really technological stuff. Uh, we got to final, and then we won. The funny part was that the, the, the simpler the product, the, most, the, the more engaging uh, for all the people. I mean, uh, uh, even Michał Brański uh, that created uh, um, uh, Odwa was really, really interested. So um, uh, we won not only money, but we won uh, attention. Uh, and thanks to, uh, thanks to that, many things happened. After, after the contest, uh, I quit the job and that's how my home looked like. Uh, I had so many pairs of shoes in my apartment. Uh, uh, it also enabled us to get the VC on board. Uh, I think that the, the contest opened uh, for us many, many doors and it was much easier to talk to VCs. Uh, so uh, we spoke, like, I think it took us four or five months to get the deal done. Uh, we got the money very quick and we started spending. Uh, it was year 2014 and we were everywhere. I mean, all the press, media, two times in Dzień Dobry TVN. So uh, for us it was a huge uh, success because we did all that uh, like for zero zlotys. Uh, we opened uh, three stores uh, uh, in a franchise system and then one store, our own flagship uh, in Warsaw. Uh, so huge, huge uh, task uh, before us in one year, but we did it. And we did a uh, professional 3D uh, designing application. It costed a lot. I think it was a bit over uh, invested. Uh, when you uh, try to do it in Europe, of course, it would be much, 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 more, much more expensive, but still, I think it was too early for uh, for us. We opened office, uh, so um, uh, things were happening very fast for us. However, at some point, money just uh, vanishes, right? <laughs> and when you start um, a fashion brand, you have to be aware that fashion is very vicious. It's all about the brand. So either you invest a lot in marketing or you have nothing. You can have the best product in the world, but in fashion industry, brand is the most important thing. I think Nasty Gal, that's closing about now, uh, and it's like the most uh, um, uh, known uh, fashion startup in the world is also uh, a good ec um, example for that. So. Uh, in six months, we were trying to get another funding. We wanted to go to Great Britain because London is the biggest uh, e-commerce market, the biggest shoe e-commerce market, but that didn't work out because what? We gave up 50% of our company. So now everyone laughs. Who the f gives 50% of their company? Well, we did. Um, so I think that was one of the um, biggest problems and biggest um, fuck ups that we did. Uh, so we didn't get uh, another funding. We had, I mean, uh, it was no nothing happening for six months. Uh, our um, talks with, with the VC were like dead. And then we thought either we will kill it or we will sell it. 
and happily we did sell the company. I'm not rich, I am uh, below the line, <laughs> right? But at least I don't have problems. So basically, all in all, I think that what I can tell you is do not do fashion startups. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Does anyone have any questions? How much money you work? Uh, one more time. How much money you work? Burnt. Sorry, burnt, burnt, yes. Not that much. Uh, uh, half a million of Polish lotis. So I think uh, as for a fashion brand, that's not a lot. And then we invested 200, uh, so, uh, so altogether, se uh, altogether 700,000 lotis. So less than a uh, less than million. Uh, in the end, you said that uh, giving up half of your control was the contribution to your downfall. Could you elaborate more on that? Like why giving up 50% of the company caused you, in the end, to have to either shut it down or sell? So usually, um, uh, other investors that even were interested um, uh, came down to the final thought that, okay, um, uh, we had the crawl back um, uh, um, agreement, but we didn't reach our goals, so it, it wasn't possible with our um, uh, investor. Uh, but the other VCs told us that that's not much, that they wanted us to have at least 30%, but they weren't uh, keen uh, to give us, you know, let's say 5 million uh, zlotys just for the rest, right? They wanted uh, more. So basically, when they f when they saw that our the, the first funding was for 50% of the company, it was like, what? What's all about that, right? Uh, and I think that 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 was one of the problems. Can I, can I? It's okay. Just one moment. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, my first question is. What was the most important learning from this failure? Or just selling the company? And second one, uh, you are listing that you are the head of mattress.pl. Yeah. So what you are, yeah. Yeah, so what that means or what you're doing right now or considering to do some startup in the future maybe? I don't know. Or joining? Uh, well, I think the, uh, um, I mean, key learning for me is really, really, really choose your market very, very carefully. I mean, think about investment that is really needed to make the business. Uh, I mean, because in the fashion industry, I mean, you can believe me, it's not possible to do it with zero zlotys or with half a million or even with one million. That's not possible. That's not how it works. Uh, with the cosmetic, uh, cosmetic company also. Or... Okay, maybe it is possible, one chance in a million, but you have to have a lot of time. So if you start uh, something connected with the beauty, uh, you have to at least take uh, into consideration 10 years, at least. So imagine investing all the time uh, in the company, your own money for 10 years. That's really, really, really difficult. It happens sometimes, but we weren't, uh, we didn't, we couldn't afford it. We had the mortgages and so on, so on. So that, that wasn't possible. When I, when I uh, sold the company, uh, I thought to myself, oh my God, what I am going to do? I mean, I focused so much on uh, uh, running away from the uh, international company and basically all those stories in the, in the press were about that. So young people running away from corporation, a dream of everyone. Like, so that was the, 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 the best marketing um, uh, claim for us. And I thought to myself, oh my God, I don't know what I will do. I cannot go back. It means like shame, you know, the Game of Thrones, shame. <laughs> I, I imagined somebody will be going <laughs> behind me and telling that. Uh, I've sent one CV 
I didn't know even where it will go. Um, and they called me, it was like for e-commerce manager, I, I wasn't even sure if e-commerce is the right thing for me because I was doing everything. I mean, developing company from the scratch, doing not only e-commerce, but also all the uh, brick and mortar shops, right? Uh, customer service, every, every, everything. So uh, they called me and, tol and uh, told me that, well, you know, I have better offer for you. We are searching for a commerce director and it's Matras and uh, we need somebody that will make a whole new website and some other projects. Uh, so that was great for me because I had a huge team. It was very, very, um, uh, a position that was very independent. So I didn't even feel the change from my own company to the corporate environment. And now I am back into shoe business. I am, uh, of course, again, running the, uh, the e-commerce and, and changing and implementing some, some new stuff. Of course, I will do something <laughs> on my own again, because uh, being an entrepreneur, it's like, um, a uh, hazard, right? It makes you want to go further and further and further, spend more. So for sure I will do something, but now I have a baggage, baggage of thoughts. And I think it's much more harder for me, having done something that was so stressful and, and I consider it uh, as, a, uh, as a failure uh, at, at some point. Well, it's, of course, it's the best school and so on and so on, but it's much more difficult for me to, to decide which project to join or which project to do. I have lots of ideas, of course. Uh, well, uh, okay, so the question is uh, uh, how much costed uh, application and uh, why do I think that was overinvestment? So one thing that was uh, we spent the uh, most uh, uh, the the most uh, expensive uh, application was the third one, and our idea was to make it 3D, so make all the uh, shoe designs in 3D. And uh, the biggest cost wa was not on the uh, development side, uh, but on the graphics side. Because, uh, for example, if you do renders for te television advert, uh, a box of cream costs 5,000 lotis. That's a lot. Uh, and we had to make 367 uh, 3D projects on layers. Uh, and they were colored not uh, at the. Uh, they were colored in the end. So like uh, uh, when somebody picks the color, then the the layers were painted with the color. Uh, so that was the uh, interesting and innovative part. Uh, and I think that was. Uh, ah, it costed um, uh, less than one hundred thousand lotis. So uh, in France, uh, a team told us that it will cost. Uh, like four times that, right, uh, in euros. Uh, so I think that was uh, taking into consideration all the 3D projects, that was cheap. But our customers didn't need all that. It appears that our conversion rates were the same when we had application with drawn by hand uh, shoes. So, well, <laughs> Overinvestment, I would say. Nothing, it, it didn't improve anything. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay, okay. Thank you, Ola. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is the one thing that you love about Polish startups, and what is the one piece of advice that you would give the new Polish startups from your experience? Well, I mean, the best, uh, 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 well, the best thing in Polish startup community is that you can talk. You can ans ask questions and everybody will, s will tell you honestly how the business looks like. Looks like. So uh, 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 at the beginning I was curious, okay, what are average conversion rates in Poland? And it was like, uh, if you search it in the internet, it doesn't exist. But then if you, if you talk with people, everybody will tell you. So openness, uh, eagerness to help, I mean, that's amazing. So many people helped us that at the moment, I am, I am if somebody asks me uh, for help, I say, they, that I say that I have a social debt to pay 
because so many people helped us. Free photo shoots, uh, free adverts, so many free stuff, so much free work that that's the best uh, possible environment that you can work with. You have to just ask. And that was for me very, very strange because I thought that it's a competitive world. Well, yes, it is, but basically people are very, very eager to help. So my advice to you is just ask for help and people will help you. <laughs>